Thank you for coming uh, today. This is my first uh, press conference here, and I am uh, very happy that it's about an issue that is particularly very important to me. Today, Senate Democrats stand united with California students as we propose legislation that will improve college access, affordability, and help students finish their degrees. This is not, this is not a reaction to the Board of Regents agreeing to President Napolitano's plan to increase tuition. There has been vigorous debate since this was proposed. And a lot has been said by the students, by families, by university leaders, as well as state leaders. But I hope everyone realizes that there's plenty, there's plenty we agree on and that we can all work together to improve higher education in California. Every kid, every student in California deserves a shot at pursuing a college degree. The future of California's economy simply depends on it. It is known that people with more education typically earn more and have a lower likelihood of being unemployed. A college education definitely helps with your paycheck. But here is another economic case for higher education and more so at the macro level. The PPIC recently reported that if current enrollment trends, this is really important, if current enrollment trends continue by the year 2025, that's 10 years from now, by the year 2025, California will have a shortfall of one million college graduates in our workforce. If the current trends continue as they are at this moment, in 10 years, by 2020, 20, 2025, we'll have one million college graduates, or I should say a shortfall of college graduates. This will make California's economy less productive, incomes and tax revenues will be lower, and more Californians will depend on the social safety net. It is absolutely clear that the future of California's economy depends on the vibrancy and the quality of our higher education system. And making cal college more affordable isn't the only way to go about this. This is also about access. Access and making sure our kids, in fact, graduate on a timely basis. The state needs to invest in our schools and now and create more seats for California students and provide the necessary support to help them finish their college degrees on time. Today's proposal provides an alternative, an alternative to raising UC tuition fees on California students, and it makes smart investments in our overall public university system, including the California State University system, as well as the community college system. And it supports low-income California students attending nonprofit and private institutions. This is an extensive and creative plan that addresses the many factors involved in ensuring college opportunity and success. Access, afford, and finish. Finish with a college degree and finish on time. I'm proud to have my colleagues here today from the Senate, and I'm proud to have my colleague from San Diego, former professor at San Jose State University, Senator Block, who has devoted his career to higher education, who will take the lead for this for the Senate Democrats. He'll walk you in a little more detailed uh, fashion about our proposal. And with that, Senator Block. Thank you, Senator DeLeon. <clears throat> Mr. Pro Tem, I'm, I'm very thankful to be the lead author on this particular bill. SB 15 is a very exciting proposal. And SB 15 happens to be the perfect bill number for this bill. 15, an important number. 15 is a number that will lead to access, lead to affordability, and lead to completion. And here's how. If students take 15 units per semester, they will graduate in four years. If students take 15 units per semester, they will get out in four years instead of six years and save about $60,000 compared to the typical six-year student. So it, makes, it will make their completion um, more certain. It will make their college education more affordable. And by finishing two years earlier, they, of course, not just save $60,000 in the cost of tuition and books and other expenses, 
but they get out in the workforce two years earlier, making money for themselves, their families, becoming taxpayers, which is good for the state of California. Um, and, and perhaps most importantly, they add to the workforce. We've heard about the workforce shortage that Pro Tem mentioned. By getting out two years earlier, we increase the workforce that California needs. And additionally, by getting out two years earlier, by graduating two years earlier, by completing, they free up space in our institutions. So if you get out in four years instead of two, you've created about 33% more capacity in our colleges. And that capacity can be filled by the students waiting in line behind them. So now we have more accessible um, higher education institutions in California. Completion, affordability, and access all accomplished by 15 units per semester by SB 15. Now, how does SB 15 really accomplish this? Number one, it facilitates the completion and expands access and affordability by funding the UC and CSU about $75 million each for additional course sections, so students will have the courses they need, and for additional academic advisors, so students will know without any doubt what they need to do to graduate in a timely fashion. Course sections, academic advisors, both key, both funded under SB 15. And additionally, the, a really creative part of this bill is the creation of a new grant, a completion incentive grant for students, which over the four years will provide them with $4,500 if they carry a full load of 15 units each and every semester. We need to motivate our students to do that because it will, as I've said earlier, open up more space, get them in the workforce more quickly, all things that California needs. At the same time, SB 15, by, by doing these other things, will let us completely eliminate the proposed 25% tuition hike over five years projected by the UC. So we reject that, that hike in tuition because we don't need it. With SB 15, we can provide the extra money that the UC truly needs. We agree the UC needs full funding, but we can provide that without having the burden borne upon our students, no longer having students be the ATM that universities go to when they need dollars. One way we do that is by increasing the tuition and fees for non-resident, out-of-state, and international students by 17%. So we cut the increase, we reject the increase on California students, but we increase tuition and fees for our international students, non-resident students, by 17% to help underwrite those cuts. It's, a, it, it's critical that we have California universities accessible to California students. That's our promise that we've made to California taxpayers. SB 15 also funds 5,000 additional slots for California students at the UC and 10,500 additional slots at the CSU, further making public higher education accessible. Finally, SB 15 boosts financial aid by adding 7,500 competitive Cal grants for non-traditional students and by rejecting the proposed 11% cut to Cal grants at private nonprofit institutions. We're talking institutions like the Claremont Colleges and University of San Diego. There is a proposal to cut the Cal grants of students attending those institutions by 11%, which would hinder accessibility for California students to higher education. We will do away with that 11% cut, um, allowing these fine private institutions to do their share in keeping California higher education accessible. So it's access, it's affordability, it's completion, it's SB 15. We can save billions with 15 units per semester. This bill will truly change the pace and the face of higher education in California, and I'm proud to stand here with my colleagues in the pro tem in presenting this bill to you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Block, and thank you for the syllabus and the whole course 101 that we did today on SB 15. Uh, with that, uh, it's an honor to bring up our chair of the Education Committee of the California State Senate. That is uh, Chair uh, Carol Liu. Good morning, everyone, and it's my pleasure to be before you uh, this morning. The Senate Higher Education Committee offers, this plan offers a comprehensive policy-based approach to the issues of access, affordability, and completion. It recognizes that each of our higher education segments is unique 
Uh, each serves different uh, students, each has different needs, different challenges, and different opportunities. In the higher education policy arena, we have long discussed the need for a fee policy that is gradual, moderate, and predictable for students and families. And that, that means a fee policy that doesn't swing from one extreme to another based on the fiscal condition of the state. And one that recognizes and assists students the to for the total cost of attendance, not just tuition. And recent policies, policies that have been directed towards student success and completion and California needs uh, a higher education to meet the needs of the economic and uh, workforce in this state. And we need a policy that recognizes both the public and private education sectors and also serve adult learners. So the Senate's plan proposes a gradual investment by the state over the next three years and a more thoughtful use of existing taxpayer dollars. It ensures that students can succeed in and complete their educational programs because it incentivizes and advances institutional and student behaviors to create more classroom seats, provide for essential support services, and move students efficiently uh, through the education pipeline. That's what we all need and want. And this, we also propose increasing the number of uh, competitive Cal grants and uh, the amount of funding provided for access costs in, to ensure that higher education serves a larger number of adult learners who need retraining. All of this is um, to the benefit for all of, of, of us in California. So we serve all families and students directly by maintaining our commitment to low tuition levels. We provide additional financial assistance to students who commit to using our public education system efficiently. We create additional access for families and students by maintaining state assistance for students who, cho who choose to attend California private colleges and universities. We ensure that our educational institutions have resources to provide seats and classes necessary for students to meet their educational goals, and we provide those resources in a manner that ensures that the state and taxpayers realize a return on their investment in the state's higher education system. In short, this plan serves every Californian. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Lou. I also want to um, before we get to um, Senator Mark Leno, um, I want to recognize to uh, three senators who are with us here today. Uh, Senator Hannah Beth Jackson, who represents the University of California at Santa Barbara. Uh, Senator Jim Bell, uh, who's uh, an alum and represents the San Jose State University. And with us also, too, we have Senator Ricardo Lara, uh, who represents Cal State University Long Beach and is also an alum from San Diego State University. And I believe, uh, if I'm correct, was Senator Block's student at one time. It was a C minus you got right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, C plus, C plus, it's C plus. I think you've gone over it and there's still time to make up you know, for the class right there. And then also too, uh, Senator Hannibal Jackson has just corrected me. Uh, uh, Cal State Channel Islands as well to in Ventura County Correct. as well too. Uh, so our next uh, speaker will be the chair of the budget committee, uh, the esteemed senator from San Francisco who represents San Francisco State University, that is Senator Mark Leno. So just to reiterate that the real theme of what might be a complex proposal here is wiser use of limited state resources. The pro tem has mentioned that PPIC report a few years back identified that about a million fewer than needed BAs will be in the state of California. What that translates to is to about 40% of all new jobs created by 2025 will require a BA, but only about 32% of Californians will have one, and that's the deficit of the one million degrees. That does not bode well for California continuing to be the eighth largest economy in the world. We need a trained labor pool. And of course, that is how our higher educational system is the economic driver for our economy. It's already been mentioned, the negative impacts for those who don't have a college degree. PPIC poll, uh, report also identified that with a college degree, over a lifetime of working, an individual 
make about 1.5 million additional dollars. They'll also spend fewer years in need of public assistance, four fewer years in poverty, and 10 months fewer spent in our state prison system. So if our public policy goal here is to reduce rates of Californians dependent on public aid, reduce rates of poverty, and reduce rates of incarceration, the question is why would we not invest more significantly in our higher education system? And if we look historically at what the general fund had been doing for higher education, it's important to notice that in the past 32 years, from around 1980 to 2012, the percentage of our general fund spent on higher education has dropped from 5% to 2.5%. And that's at UC. At the California State University system, that number went from 4.6% down to 2.1% of our general fund spent at CSU. And consequently, the percentage of our higher university system's core missions supported by the general fund at UC dropped from 87% down to 38%, and at CSU dropped from 93% down to 51%. These are exponential drops of state dollars, taxpayer dollars invested in higher education at a time when 59% According to the PPIC report, 59% of Californians think we should be investing more of their tax dollars. They don't want to pay more, but they think that which they're paying, more should be spent for higher education. So with regard to this proposal, it would invest 158 million additional general fund dollars into the system. That decreases by year three down to $66 million, so it's a relatively very modest investment. 82 million additional will be from the, as Senator Block mentioned, the 17% increase for non-residents tuition, and then a repurposing of the money we've already identified from the middle class scholarship program, 102 million of that, so that we can actually provide to more students more money than what is proposed currently. So put all that together, we've got about 300 and 342 million additional dollars to be investing over the next few years in higher education for all the reasons we've already stated. This makes great sense. It does resolve the debate going on between legislature, UC, administration, and does it with a very modest, thoughtful, but clearly effective investment of general fund dollars. Okay, with that, uh, we will take uh, questions uh, from all you folks, and uh, obviously we have the chair of the Education Committee, uh, Senator Carol Liu, um, Senator Block, as well as our budget chair, uh, Mr. Leonard, so, as well as myself, as well as, you know, Ms. Hannah Beth Jackson, Mr. Ricardo, and Mr. Jim Powell. So questions? Can you speak to the, uh, the 15 units? Why are, what percentage of students aren't taking? I don't have the precise number with regards to how many students in the Cal State system are not taking complete 15 units. A complete student is actually 12 units in the Cal State University system, but there's a variety of factors why it takes uh, students at the Cal State level so many years to graduate. The average for a UC student is 4.1 uh, years to graduate if you attend any UC. Um, if you attend a Cal State school, uh, the average to graduate is 6.1, 6.4 years to graduate. Obviously, you incur much more debt. Uh, you work in several jobs. A lot of folks are from the middle class, uh, from working class families, from the working poor. Uh, those are the majority of the students in the Cal State system. Therefore, it takes much longer to graduate. You incur more debt or you work in a couple jobs. You're working two or your three jobs. And when you don't graduate on time, you're holding a slot. And that slot could be filled by an incoming freshman coming in. I'm just trying to get at why it's taking that long. Is it the inability to get the courses they need? Yeah. Let, let me go to Senator Block right here. Yeah. Thank you. If I can speak to that, in my experience at San Diego State, and I was there for 26 years, there was a combination of things. One is that there aren't enough course sections available, and SB 15 addresses that by adding more course sections. 
Another problem is that students may have courses available but don't know what the sequence is they need to take or aren't sure exactly which requirements from column A and B they need to graduate. And that's why SB 15 also provides more funding for academic advisors who can help students on that pathway. And the third reason, as, as the pro tem mentioned, is financial issue that students have uh, where they might have to work. But hopefully the, the completion grant will help alleviate some of the financial burden for students so they actually get paid for completing 15 units and don't have to take a, a lower number of units. So in raw numbers, only about 7,000, 7,400, I think, benefited from it. And we found that about 40% of them actually had assets in six figures. So that was not actually f for whom it would be best intended and used. And so we think that this can, the repurposing, would benefit a greater number of students, have all the ancillary benefits as well of the incentive grants to help them take more courses, which will be provided so they don't have to work as many jobs, hours, job hours, and be able to finish in four years, which again frees up spots, a big issue for the governor, as well as keep their own debt load down because they'll be saving upwards of $60,000 or more by completing four years instead of six. And will also benefit a wider pool with a greater amount of, of grant. Sure. Weren't you all voting votes for the middle class scholarship program? Didn't you all support it? I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, I mean, you supported it, but now you say it's not working. I mean, I'm just trying to understand. I see it as an incremental step forward that we collectively came together, legislature and administration, to identify funds. And now we've done that with a closer look and review, we can decide that. How can we use those dollars even more wisely to benefit more students, to increase graduation rates, and to save student debt costs? And that's what we're trying to do with this. On the, excuse me, on the uh, completion incentive grants, the $4,500, would those be need-based, or are those an entitlement to anybody, any student who, who takes the required number of courses? How, 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 who would talk about those grants? Are you going to take that? Yeah. The CIG, the um, incentive grant to graduate, obviously, in four years, as opposed to the average uh, 6.1 years, uh, we're looking at need base, but we're also including middle class kids as well, too. So it's not just exclusively low income kids, but rather low income kids, working families, as well as middle class, middle class kids. We're in, this is not a critique uh, of any particularly current program. Uh, that's in existence right now. We want to do what Senator uh, Mark Leno just articulated. We want to expand that pool, and we want to include more winners in the winner's circle. It's just that simple. Uh, we don't want to just focus on uh, tens of thousands of students, but rather hundreds of thousands of students who could be eligible if we utilize the resources wisely, more wisely, and bring about much more better efficiencies so we can stretch this dollar in such a way that it's targeted. So we believe by using the resources for the incentive grants to graduate on time. Therefore, they're able to carry a larger load because they're incentivized through the resources. Slots open up. When slots open up, you have more kids coming in, into the system. Middle class kids are covered by this, and they're not, uh, 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 their money is not, in short, their money is not taken from them. So we've done, we've been very, very thoughtful in our approach to make sure that no one is hurt uh, by this program. So it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to really take an exhaustive look of the way the financial system works currently at the UC as well as the Cal State system. Would the grant be actual cash payment to the students or a reduction in tuition or credit? No, right now we have it as a cash payment to students. Well, we're, right now we're, we're going to purchase out the 5% uh, increase as well, that too. That still puts another, you know, $1,000 financial burden back on them. I don't think that's $1,000. Uh, I well, don't think the goal I mean, is $1,000. It was about an average of about $900 something dollars for the middle class scholarship. So if you're not going to get that anymore, that, you know, that puts a financial burden back on them. That's not going to be covered by the middle class scholarship grant. Right. 
Now, well, remember, we have the out-of-state tuition right now. Out-of-state tuition brings in roughly about $83 million. We'll increase about 17%. Uh, that is in, uh, in the same with the University of Virginia. University of Michigan and Armour is a little higher, but we have those monies coming in right. at $83 million. So you're not planning to lower its tuition anytime soon, so family by family, the burden is actually going to go up for everything. No, not necessarily. You know, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, a couple things. First of all, those who are already um, qualified for the middle class scholarship, already recipients and attending, will continue to get theirs. Nobody will be cut off under this program. Those students who come in the future will benefit from the fact that we are rejecting a 5% annual increase for the next five years. That's a 25% increase in UC tuition that students would have to pay that they will no longer have to pay. So UC students will be among the greatest beneficiaries of SB 15. But Senator Block, if I may, you don't have control over the UC tuition. We can persuade. We do have control over the budget. Senator, along those lines, the governor has made clear he doesn't want to give extra funding to CSU and UC. He rejected some increases last year. What, how do you convince him that this is something $75 million well, this increase is particularly targeted at making higher education more efficient. And the governor always talks about using our dollars more efficiently. The governor knows we need to get more students out in the workforce. He's read the PPIC report that says we need a million more college graduates by 2025. Um, the governor is rightfully um, very frugal with the state's dollars. But if we can show him a way to spend a little more to get a lot more, I think the governor will resonate to that. Well, I think, this, if, if I'm being clear, the, the universities will have the slots available, and those are slots available at the in-state tuition. We are encouraging universities to use these slots for California students, and, and I think with the increase at the UC of fees on non-resident students, they will, the universities will see it's much more cost-effective for them to use these slots for in-state students. You can have a lot more students for the same amount of money, get more bang for the buck, basically. Yeah, first of all, this will still keep California as one of the least expensive major state university systems, research university systems in the country. So while we raise the, the out-of-state and international fees, we're still a good bargain. Secondly, when students come from other states and from other countries to California, I think they're less concerned about the bargain than they are about the quality of education. And no place has higher quality education than the University of California here in, here in this state. Do you anticipate Speaker Tony Atkins supporting the elimination of the middle class scholarship program in light of what you've explained? Well, we're not talking about eliminating the middle class scholarship. We're talking about repurposing, for, re repurposing some of the dollars after, after a certain time period passes. Uh, my, my relationship with uh, Speaker Atkins is such that she's a very, very bright woman. And she will see, I think, the wisdom in using dollars more effectively to get students, students in her district from UCSD, in and out of school as quickly as possible, to get them into the workforce as quickly as possible. I mean, we're going to sit down and work with the governor, and we're going to sit down, and when I say we, it's the pro tem, and work with the speaker. And uh, I think no bill ends up looking exactly the way it looks when you start had this conversation with uh, President Napolitano yesterday. So, so this bill will certainly morph and change a bit, but it is clearly a step in the right direction for California and for California students. Let me, say, let me just, and then we'll finish it off right now. Um, this is the beginning of a very thoughtful conversation. Um, it's not a critique of any particular current program. I think everything has to be on the table because we have a dilemma right now, and the dilemma is the trend currently right now is we'll be one million short graduate students in the University of California as well as Cal State system. We have an opportunity to take an exhaustive look at the way the system currently works financially for financial aid. Those who deserve it, those perhaps who may be getting more than they should be getting, who have the financial wherewithal 
to actually pay for the <coughs> programs. It's an opportunity to look at the economic security of the state of California and think about this in a long, to mid to long term way. This is the beginning process. This is a, an engagement and conversation. We had our first conversation about it yesterday. It was a very productive conversation. They have their proposal. We have ours. There's a lot of common uh, 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 um, uh, goals that we have together. There's some things that we're supporting already together. We'll have that discussion with the governor. The discussion was, does the governor even want to give one single penny above and beyond that they currently receive right now? We know that the governor has a well-deserved reputation of being very fiscally tight-fisted with the UC system in particular. But the issue is if we can provide efficiencies and get folks to graduate on a timely fashion, which is something that's never been dealt with, with the Cal State system in particular, and we can provide value and more bang for the buck and stretch taxpayer dollars in a very intelligent way, getting more kids into the system, I think it becomes a win-win situation. So we're looking forward to that conversation with Speaker Tony Atkins as well as the governor. I've had personal conversations already with uh, President Janet Napolitano. I said, I respect your moxie. We're going to have a dialogue. It's going to be a vigorous, heated dialogue behind the scenes as well as through the media. Um, she wants the same thing that we want, and we want the same thing that she wants. Now, we may go about it a different way. We clearly, all of us here collectively, and all the Senate Democrats do not support a tuition tax hike on students because they can't afford it right now. That will actually exasperate the situation and make them stay in school longer, securing more loans that they won't be able to pay off until years later on, or they'll have to get two or three jobs, which again will compound the problem and make them stay in school longer, which will not open up slots. So we have to be thoughtful about this as we move forward. With that, we want to thank you very much. If anyone has any questions one-on-one, -on -one, please feel free. All the members are here. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Thank you.